543. Yeah, we are. Yeah, there you go. Well, good evening. Welcome to the 18th Spotlight Series for the St. Genevieve Museum Learning Center. Can we believe that we've been here for two years already? It's been quite an adventure, but Time anyway. Time flies when you're having fun. That's, that's right. the way this works, Jan. My name is Jan Lloyd, and I'm the Director of Education for the Museum Center. Um, what we, who we have with us tonight is Stephanie Greminger, who is our marketing and social media specialist. We have Carrie Davidson, who is our developmental specialist. And we have Robert Wolk, you're very familiar with Robert, our executive director and the Museum Learning Center CEO. And Rich Rebecca, who is our PR director and of operations. Um, we are gonna start tonight by just introducing the, the new persons on our <laughs> <laughs> persons, gals, new persons. women. It's <laughs> lovely to have ladies join this effort. I think it's great. So we're going to start by just having a conversation with Stephanie. Stephanie has had a lot of experience and exposure in St. Genevieve. I have known her through the radio and through the hospital organization. So I'm going to let Stephanie just share her past experience and your expertise and you know the reason why you kind of were interested in joining our efforts with the St. Genevieve Museum Learning Center. All right well I'll see what I can do there. Um, I've been in St. Gen for 38 years now. Oh wow. my gosh. Yeah. I'm feeling old these days. I really am. Never admit um, that. I know <laughs> but I started with the uh, local radio station in town uh, doing on-air work and production work and then we started a newspaper along the line for a number of years and then we had um, a printing operation, a small end printing operation. So I kind of got my feet wet doing um, those types of, of skills, uh, doing on-air work a lot. And um, then about 15 years ago, um, an opening at the hospital came up. And I thought, well, that might be time to start something a little different. So I started working in the PR department of, of the St. Jen County Memorial. Uh, and that was really really an eye-opener because a lot of people think, oh, what do you do? You go, you know, you send out a press release and, you know, uh, uh, an ad here and there and you're good to go. There is so much going on behind those walls at the hospital mm -hmm. that I think uh, people just don't don't realize that. So mm -hmm. there's always something going on. I did the uh, hospital newsletter and um, uh, it was twice a month. And you'd think, oh my gosh, every month, you know, so what am I gonna fill this with? There was always something to fill it with, mm -hmm. so um, uh, that was that was uh, uh, pretty eye-opening to me mm -hmm. because there's a lot going on there. So, you know, I, I um, got to do a lot of different things there too. Um, I kept my same skill set with uh, interviewing uh, the physicians and so forth, and a lot of writing, and uh, then I did uh, a little more uh, graphic work uh, with um, ads and billboards and and um, things like that so um, so that's the kind of stuff I, I hope to bring to the the museum learning center uh, as well and help out in that capacity so um, how did I get started in it I don't know when I first heard about it I thought this really sounds cool mm -hmm. and I thought I want to be a tour a, a tour guide there mm -hmm. and then I since found out in the museum world it's called a docent yeah. <laughs> so I'm learning things every day. Uh, so uh, that's, and I definitely will do that uh, mm -hmm. at some point. But um, that's kind of how I got, got into it. And um, social media, uh, we hope to utilize a lot of that. Um, uh, in fact, uh, uh, we can do it anytime. I've got uh, our latest posting mm -hmm. uh, to Facebook that we can uh, have Charles, our engineer, um, play at any time that we want um, this evening. I know that you've given it a great facelift. Since you've been with us, you've really looked at the, the website and have really made it very nice. We're, we're still in, in um, uh, massage mode of, mm -hmm. the, of mm -hmm. the new website, um, and we hope to uh, launch that very soon. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, that's the kind of stuff, stuff we're doing. You want to take a look at that Facebook posting now? Sure. All Charles. right, Charles, take it away. Thank you. 
Something big is coming to St. Genevieve. The finishing touches are being made to the historic Ketting Building to make way for the St. Genevieve Museum Learning Center. Walls have been torn down and built up again, wiring and plumbing have been replaced, and floors to ceilings have been rejuvenated. New windows are now in place, a new sidewalk was poured, and a myriad of other construction details to take us into the final stretch are being completed. There's an old Chinese saying that when you've made it 90% down the path, you're halfway to your destination. The building itself will be completed very soon, but then the real work begins in filling the Museum Learning Center with eye-opening displays. A lot of the work now is taking place outside of the museum. Some of the showstoppers that reflect life thousands of years ago are now being created. Here, artist Shane Folks is painting just one of the dinosaurs that will live in the new museum learning center. What is this guy you're, you're doing now? What now this creature one is, is called a Centarsis, and he was about 11 feet long. Um, it was a predator dinosaur, so it ate meat. And in this particular pose, he's posed leaping up into the air, chasing after a small flying pterosaur, flying reptile, which isn't here, but when the museum will be hung from the ceiling or, or attached in some fashion so that it looks free floating, and he'll be jumping up to, to grab it. Uh, that's the idea behind it. Shane has been at his craft for over 20 years and makes his living sculpting and painting dinosaurs. Yeah, I have my own sculptural studio uh, called Cretaceous Creations of America. and. Uh, at a uh, sculpt and make life size and scale model dinosaurs, mostly scale model, and uh, sell them all over the world. And uh, basically, it's for not only for the private collector, hobbyist, uh, but it's also for museum work as well. So, a lot of it segues into other avenues. Um, but yeah, it's been pretty cool to be able to take your art career and turned into a full-time business, and since uh, I've always had a love for dinosaurs, I, I tied the two together, figuring, well, that'll be the best opportunity for my business to grow. If you, whatever it is you're doing, you, you like it the most, you're probably going to have the most success with it, so I chose the route of prehistoric wildlife as my artistic venue. And I assume it's kind of... Um very gratifying once you finish a project like this to see it in a venue like the museum. Yeah, yeah, I've had, I've got several of my works in museums, uh, but most of my kit sales and stuff that I do, models that I sculpt, go to hobbyists and private collectors, but yeah, there is, there is a certain amount that goes to the museum, and because this is in Missouri, and Missouri doesn't have anything like a uh, natural history museum or anything along those lines, this learning center, which will be kind of almost like a little miniature museum of natural history, um, it'll be great for the state because we don't have something like this. The closest thing they have would be the Science Center and it's a little, uh, it's not represented very well under the theme of the dinosaur aspect and this will be a lot stronger. Plus there'll be a lot of other stuff, you know, early American Indian artifacts and uh, Viking lore and tools and the guy has a huge fossil collection as well. So there's going to be a lot of stuff in there for people to check out. Your new St. Genevieve Museum Learning Center will come to life in 2019. Join us. So that's the kind of thing um, we want to keep people updated on. I mean, I know they, they know there's, there's stuff going on at the building, but they may not know what. So we want to keep them uh, engaged and mm -hmm. uh, excited about uh, what's uh, coming down the pike. So I'm sure you're also going to be giving an update on scheduled events coming oh absolutely through. yeah and, and just especially when we when we open right uh, yeah they'll everyone will be uh, well versed in, into what's what's going on and um, I think the you know the unique thing is I mean this is going to be a learning center as well so anyone can put stuff on a table and say come and look at it but I think we're going to be much more than that mm -hmm. um, uh, guy and Doris uh, Darrow I mean they just you just talk to them and uh, you learn so much every time, mm -hmm. and I think they'll they'll be a uh, integral part of um, this museum. Um, you know, I'm sure they'll be accessible on many many occasions to talk to, and uh, very approachable. And they'll have stories to tell about a lot of their adventures and going on digs, and um, you know, so it, it'll be fascinating. I'm looking forward to it. 
Well, I know our vision is to be able to have like a voiceover of part of the history of each of the items mm -hmm. that are there so that they can hear the story and then if they're interested in researching it beyond that point, then there will be a reference point to, you know, additional right. historical evidence or mm -hmm. stories related to it and, and then our research team will help them. Yeah. pursue that. So that's exciting. So I, yeah. I think that your voice will be heard there as well. Oh, well, I hope, yeah, I hope so. so. Yeah, <laughs> That'll be fun. Cool. And Jen, she's been helping us a lot longer than anybody knows because every time Rich and I went out and we did a presentation, we borrowed her overhead projector. <laughs> oh, is that we right? We had her overhead projector more than she had the uh, Yeah. She finally had to ask permission to get it back from us so she could do a presentation. So, but uh, thank you very much. Uh, sure, it, it, sure. it has helped us immensely because we did uh, a lot of presentations and that projector was used every mm -hmm. time. So. so I think you're also going to be a great asset because you're very involved in the community. I know you're part of the Rotary yeah. and that you know what's going on between the other organizations in town and the other businesses. And I uh, know quite a few of the people that are going to support this yeah. museum. Yeah, and it really is... Uh, a community effort I think there's a lot of people involved with with this operation and um, I'm I'm very excited to be a part of that well, we're um, really happy to have you oh, well I, <laughs> <laughs> I can do what I can sure. but you know um, yeah it'll be it'll be good it'll be good and so great for the town I mean my goodness um, this town really is is seeing um, I don't know if you want to call it a regrowth or a resurgence of uh, of what, but I mean, you got the community center that's right. expanding with mm -hmm. the uh, outdoor water park. You've got the National Park Service that's coming mm -hmm. in. Um, you've got the new uh, Colonial Life uh, Museum just down the road. The next town over, you've got the Vietnam uh, War, war. Memorial. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is becoming much more than just a half-day destination. I think you know. I mean, people can come down here and spend a weekend or, or three days, and uh, oh, the wineries too. Exactly, you know, I mean, the wineries, a, and they lot. keep adding more. And yeah. so it's like the more. So we there's have energy um, around here. The more exactly. we will have people coming. So just there's a lot. Did you notice how many more wineries have opened since Rich moved to town? Uh, <laughs> what, what's that about? I I tried <laughs> to do my best. <laughs> Anything for the economy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's that's a bullet I'll take for the team yeah. every, any day man, of the Rich. week. <laughs> You're a good man, Rich. <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be fun to see you know how this all all shakes out and everything will come together and bring the people into town. So you thought you retired, but we really oh, yeah. are not going to let you do that because I think there's a lot of work yet to do, right? Well, you know, they say, you know, if you retire and you don't do anything, you just die. That's right. So. We're not going to let you die. I promise you that. <laughs> that's that's so, our option. Got to gotta yeah. keep, no, no, gotta keep gotta, doing something. You got to keep doing something. You got to <laughs> keep busy. And you have to have a passion about what you're doing. You have to exercise, eat well, and have a passion. <laughs> so this is our passion, right? There you go. <laughs> yes, it is. You heard here first. Jan said that's she's right. not going to let you die. I'm so. not going to let me I, die. I and this I will let you die. How does that sound? I'm starting to list the jobs I have after I retire from teaching, but oh, this is one of them for sure. Well, so we'll go ahead and uh, introduce Carrie. Carrie, you've been a resident of the community for a couple of years now, right? You've bought a seven. Property. I'm seven. on my second home that I own. Oh, yes. second one. So you've been yes. here longer than I realized. Yes. And just share a little bit about your background and your expertise that you bring to the museum. So I am in development. I've been in development, getting ready to start on my 15th year. Um, I worked a number of years with Church World Service, another nonprofit organization, uh, Westminster College, uh, Rankin Technical College, and currently with the National FFA Foundation. So I was um, excited to be a part of the St. Jen Museum and Learning Center due to the fact um, it's something that I get to be a part of at the, from the ground up, which is rare here in this community. It seems like everything's been around forever. Yeah. So it's, it's been very exciting to come on board and be a part of helping to hopefully finish the capital campaign and then um, start moving toward uh, fundraising efforts that will endow um, a, a legacy of the uh, St. Jen Museum and Learning Center to live on long past all of us are being here and the next generation takes over and keeps it going. So that's our ultimate goals um, with annual letters and um, we still have naming right opportunities with the campaign if, if someone's out there and is interested in um, 
learning more about that, please get a hold of one of us from the St. Jen Museum and Learning Center because we'd love to tell you more about it. But we're very excited. And one of the things that excited us when we talked to Carrie was the first thing she brought to us was the endowment. <clears throat> she said, this thing has got to be endowed mm -hmm. to survive, which mm -hmm. we knew mm -hmm. uh, Carrie brings those expertise to us. And that's exciting to us. And I think you have a lot of connections that maybe we didn't have before, just because of your previous employment yes. and people that you know and grant opportunities and opportunities for help. Yeah, I, we're very fortunate. Um, uh, a, a good dear friend of mine is writing grants for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And um, he's probably, in my years of development, the uh, most seasoned grant writer and had the most success of any grant writer I've worked with in the last 15 years. And so his name's Keith Mullen and mm -hmm. he's, he's on board with us as well. And he's out of St. Louis. Right. So. so we've had this list of what we must have <laughs> and what we want. Yes. <laughs> so we're working on what we must have to get the Museum Learning Center opened and we're, we have a long list of things that we'd like to develop. So I think that that will be very, very helpful. Yes. So. So we're working at it. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. So we're already setting goals for next year. So in the grant arena for sure. Um, where we'll have a better strategy going forward, having a full year to work on. So by meeting timelines and setting things. Um, so hopefully we can wrap up the capital campaign with grants is one of our goals. Is there anything you want to share with the community as far as your needs or our needs? Um, I would say, like I mentioned, that we still have naming rights opportunities for people who are interested in uh, joining the capital campaign and being a part of such a wonderful mm -hmm. uh, experience and opportunity in the community and the legacy of their name mm -hmm. being out there. Um, we're also, Stephanie and I are working hard together to uh, do an annual letter. So we want everybody to be on the lookout for an annual letter that will be coming hopefully at the end of the year. Um, on that annual letter, we'll give some opportunities of maybe you don't feel like you're in the 10,000 to 250,000 naming right capacity, but this would give you an opportunity to meet a need, whether mm -hmm. that's a stadium seat or a shadow box or many opportunities. And the annual letter will talk about that. Yeah, so we're really excited. Yeah, I think it's really uh, kind of exciting. Uh, you talk about the naming rights. When you think of the existing museum, you know, you can you can see from end to end, right. you know, where um, the new museum uh, will be divided into so many really cool rooms, agriculture and mining and uh, Civil War and uh, other wartime memorabilia, and of course, St. Genevieve history, and of course, the, the big dinosaur room. So there will be ample opportunities, whatever interests you the most, uh, perhaps to say, well, hey, I want to, maybe I want to name that room, or or something of that nature, or, or some particular item that goes into that uh, display. So um, I, it'll it'll be pretty exciting. Not to put down the current museum. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's just no, so much no. bigger and has so you're many right. more no, possibilities. You, you know, mm -hmm. you're spot on. You, you walk in the current museum. Um, it it was it was built and developed for a reason, mm -hmm. and it it had a good life there. Yeah. Uh, the people that oversaw it did the best they possibly could, um, but. You're right. You could stand anywhere in that facility mm -hmm. and you you could yeah. see it all. And mm -hmm. there's not a lot to name other than the actual display yeah. cases. But the opportunities in the uh, in the learning center, um, yeah. they're unlimited. I mean, the bank of computers that we're, we're going to use as the basis for our research, um, somebody may want to, would like to see their name or their family mm -hmm as mm -hmm. the, don the, the donors of you know, the three computers, the printer that goes with it, uh, the mm -hmm. information station. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's, there's a lot that the Learning Center um, has on the table for people if, should they, mm -hmm. they want to get involved. And I think it's important to, while we're talking about that, is that the existing museum is in no way, shape, or form going away. 
everything that's in the existing museum in that 1,500 square feet that we have will be moved over to the new museum and it will be placed in chronologically in the area where it should fit. Mm -hmm. So uh, you'll have ancient civilizations, you'll have Civil War civilizations, you'll have history throughout the times. But everything in that museum will come over there, over to the new learning center, and we've got 11,500 square feet in the mm -hmm. new learning center. And uh, amazingly enough, the Darrow's collection, that, that building is not big enough to house their <laughs> collection. And, and that, I think that says quite a bit about what they bring. Mm -hmm. Plus right. our, own, our own collection from Arkansas. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean. The different areas, right. And, as we see, people are starting to recognize that we have something that, or a place that to show different civilizations and we're the recipient of collections or even I, people I, from the community that I, want I could be, to share. I could be misinformed, but I don't think I am. I think we're going to be hard pressed not to have an ancient civilization on display. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that we're going to fill a room with all, you know, ancient Rome or, mm -hmm. uh, or ancient Egypt, but we've, between the Darrow collection and our own collection, that's not the museum collection, mm -hmm. I'm talking, I'm referring mm -hmm. to the, the Danny Harris, the Danny collection. Harris the Danny collection. Harris collection right. to us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, right. what, uh, it's... The Viking. Yeah, yeah. The, the Viking, the Viking uh, Sumeri, Ottoman, right. Roman, Egyptian, um, yeah, we... We need a building almost the same size as as the Ketting building to to house everything visually. Well, and to have it up on display at all times and right. see what we're going to probably have to do is rotate those, which will keep interest in people coming yeah. back to the museum, right. which would be a good thing. F we, financially, right. that would be that's right. that would be better for us every, every right. so many months to have a you know a new fresh exhibit, exhibit. A fresh exhibit. Right. Right. yeah, a new exhibit. And we're we're planning the and I'm, I don't want I don't want to take any of Robert's thunder, but um, you know some of the things that we we may discuss or uh, he'll share with us is we're trying to get some of the display cases to have casters on the bottom of them so that they can you know you come into the the learning center on a Monday and you go up to the St Genevieve room and you may see five horizontal cases you know along the the walls mm -hmm. you may come in Friday. And we may have a special exhibit going on, and, and three of those horizontal cases could be outside the St. Genevieve room uh, making a partial wall. Mm. Uh, we'll be able to move things around. There'll be flexibility. We don't have flexibility in the current museum, right. which was, and we've discussed this o uh, over the airwaves. Um, that's one of the reasons why we're moving, because there's no flexibility. The footprint that you see, that's the footprint that you're going to continue to see. We can't change things in the current museum. And I think what is exciting about the possibilities is that as schools start to utilize the Museum Learning Center for our field trips, and they have a certain need that they want us to maybe address, that we can then put a display together, a certain area that they're studying, a certain time in history. Um, so that's unending work, right? That's oh, yeah. endless things that we need to be doing is setting up little and learning that, activities around those things. And that, dove, that dovetails into an idea that we have that, that is certainly on the want list. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to have, I don't, I don't know, out here in the Midwest, do, are there bookmobiles? There used to Buses be. There used to be. <laughs> used to be. Okay, well, that's still prevalent back yeah. on the East Coast. But, well, yeah. we would like to have a learning center mobile. We would like to, you know, have a vehicle that we own and take it to um, a smaller community. Hmm. Yeah, I, I never even thought of a smaller community. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about uh, nursing homes and, and, and hospitals, people that, you know, can't come to us. Hmm. Well, you know, why can't, why can't we go to them? If, if, if one of the schools are having, whether it's uh, uh, in town, whether it's Valley or the, or, or the, uh, the R2 uh, school system, if, if somebody's doing a special, you know, unit on, let's say, the Civil War, mm -hmm. you know, the choice is they can come to the museum and see our display, or we're in the community together, why don't we just load up what we have 
and do a show and tell at the school. Where you can get to all of the different students and their different ages. Of course, you can't yeah. bring the whole school over. So you're right. And then that would stir the interest to see what else we have. You know, we reach out, show yeah. them a little bit about what we have, that sure. we have more back. It just kind of then is a follow-up then to join us over there for additional education. Or different Large budget. van on that one. Yeah, list. that yes. one list. Okay. Yeah. We yeah. need a Which, naming uh, right on that uh, one. It doesn't have to be a Winnebago because we'll get in trouble if we use it for personal use. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> it might not get around the square very well either. Yeah. Yeah. Small is good for now, but we'll dream on, right? Yeah. But Jen, part of this was created by talking with the Darrows, and you know they do shows all over the United States yeah. by taking their dinosaurs and setting them up at gardens. But what Guy said, he wants to spend the rest of his life educating young kids, getting them excited about this stuff. And part of what you said, they got to touch it, they got to feel mm -hmm. it, right. they got to be part of it. So when they, he brings a class in, he'd like to put it out on a table and say, here, touch this. Here's some Roman coins from back how many oh, years ago. Uh, the ones I handled that, that, that the uh, appraisers let me handle were from uh, Julius Caesar's reign. So here's a Julius Caesar coin of that time frame. Sit down here and we'll show you how to clean it. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. part of what Guy has in mind. Plus he has actual full-size dinosaurs for dig pits for young kids that he will show them uh, when you're unearthing it. So he'll put this mold uh, uh, down into a, a sandbox or a mm -hmm. pea gravel, whatever he decides to use. Then they will uncover it, and as they uncover it, they log in what they found at that location, and, and mm -hmm. he shows how a paleontologist would actually uncover that and log it so they know how this thing was laying. That's what Guy wants to do, and that's part of what we got excited about when they come to us and said this is what we want to do this is their legacy uh, this is what guy and doris have done all their life and now well, what history is here. beneath our feet is really what he's talking about what can we learn from the earth mm -hmm. what can we learn from what's right here and are you interested in knowing the next question is we're so distracted but there's so much for us to understand and in the in the dirt yeah, underneath our feet really and, and, and how that, that that plays that plays right into our learning concept mm -hmm. because we've been telling people if a display is set up properly you can learn enough on the little three by five card next to that display mm -hmm. but there's a hell of a lot more information mm -hmm. should you want to know mm -hmm. and we're going to be giving visitors the opportunity to either do their own research or grab a docent mm -hmm. or go upstairs to our information desk and tell the person behind the desk what your needs are and before you leave the museum Obviously, it's going to be in the gift store that mm -hmm. you have to pick up your free information. Mm -hmm. And while you're there, you may be obligated to pick up another Christmas <laughs> ornament or another keychain or another refrigerator magnet. You're going to want to pick up another. You're going to want obligated. to. You're going to want yeah. to because there's going to be cool stuff in that gift yeah. store. Yeah. Right? And, and, but the opposite, we're, right. we're not forcing anybody to do anything they don't want to, to do, do mm -hmm. but we're giving, we will give visitors the opportunity to learn more and yeah. I, I I've yeah. been telling people I've been telling people that this is a five a five cents a five cents not five cents but right. five, five sensory sen sensory uh, sensory yeah. five sensory uh, Stimulating, facility stim and people yeah. say well wait a minute you're gonna taste things <laughs> and I said well yeah we're, we're planning a we're planning a living museum mm -hmm. on the other side of the courtyard from the main facility I said, and I can see somebody with an open fire and a cast iron skillet giving a lesson on making cornbread. Mm -hmm. And what better way to get an elementary school uh, if they can't afford the ingredients mm -hmm. to make their own cornbread? Well, we're a 501c3. Mm -hmm. We can put little packet. I mean, I'd be willing to do that myself. Mm -hmm. And then everybody, every all 30 kids will, you know, make their own cornbread to 
to either eat right there in the courtyard or to take home. Hmm. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna taste. I don't know if if, there, if there's any flavor to petrified wood. <laughs> we're gonna have so many petrified woods. I guess kids can lick it <laughs> and let us know. <laughs> but you were gonna you well, say something. There's gonna be plenty of learning outside of the museum mm -hmm. as well as in the museum. Uh, the courtyard is going to be phenomenal. You guys have, have really thought that out well. Um, there will be um, squares, large squares of fossil mm -hmm. uh, that people will see before they even go into the museum and uh, they'll be able to learn about what they're seeing be below their feet. There's fossil. We walk on fossils every day right. and we don't even know it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this will give them, oh my God, that's a that's a fossil, really? Mm -hmm. uh, so there'll be a lot of learning taking place even prior to entering the building, so, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Guy has got some great fossils in his collection. Yeah. And I can see us taking the fossils out in the van, but I don't know how we're going to pack those dinosaurs yeah. <laughs> in the van. We're going to need a Winnebago Plus, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We might need an 18-wheeler. Hey, hey, I think what? we need an 18-wheeler. If, 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 if she My list is getting bigger. If, listen, if, if she can get us a Winnebago, I see a field trip to Utah oh. and, and, and go dig our own dinosaur bones and bring them back. Uh -huh. In Wyoming, mm. we I've can actually that do that in Missouri, and we could do it in Missouri. But awesome. the Winnebago, too big for the Missouri roads. Okay, we want to hit the <laughs> interstate. I mean, if we're going to get in trouble, come on, let's get in trouble. <laughs> Robert, tell us what's going on in the building. Well, we're about. Uh, I would say we're probably at the ninety percent mark on the building of being complete. And most of the people that drove by there have now seen the new windows mm -hmm. that have been put, placed in there. Uh, this week we have poured the sidewalk, so the sidewalk's back up to the front of the building, exposed aggregate, beautiful sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Right, Karen? Yes, it is. It is gorgeous. <laughs> uh, the courtyard drains are in, so mm -hmm. the courtyard is shaping up. Uh, it depends how quickly we can get our hands on the uh, fossils to put in that courtyard. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> as with everything in construction, as you're moving forward and you start looking at it, things change. So uh, there's items that are being changed right now because we can see the walls in place and we can see how the rooms are going to be set up. Mm -hmm. So there are items that are being changed to accommodate the displays that the Darrells are going to build. And uh, we've brought in two gentlemen that have expertise in this area, and they've brought quite a few changes. So we're 90% there, and we're probably taking a step back now and watching how they're going to lay those displays out. But the uh, sheetrock work is all done. Uh, they filled the sheetrock, all the new heating, cooling, all the plumbing, all, the, whole house, uh, the whole building has been rewired. Uh, mm -hmm. So, all of that work is done. The plasterers are in there right now, plastering the walls that get plastered. Uh, the anchors for the large bird that hangs from the top, there's a name on that. Do you know? Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's from the pterodactyl family, but Multis, it's... Multiple uh, syllables in that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, but it, it's like a uh, small airplane hanging up there, 35 foot long, mm -hmm. wing, wingspan, 24 foot long. The anchors have all been placed in there. So all of that has been thought out. Now it is actually bringing those displays in, setting them in the museum space, and then moving stuff around to make it uh, a good pathway mm -hmm. and a good mm -hmm. way to route people through it. So a lot of those things are taking place right now. Uh, we, we will uh, be moving our current museum and uh, using that space to uh, stage things for this museum. So these two gentlemen that we have hired that have expertise in this that will set their stuff up in that current museum to stage the props and stuff for the new museum. Oh, okay. And Rich has been working on that piece of it, so he's moving it over there. Uh, the building, there, uh, the, we do have the original bricks, and that's about it. Don't you have the, and the hardwood floors? The hardwood floors in one room upstairs okay. will be refinished and stay. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing we're kind of proud of about this uh, whole thing is we, when we bid this, we looked at, we took in bids 
but we tried to award every bid to a local contractor. So we have Dunsey Construction doing the primary work. Steve Bacon's the architect. Marzuko Electric is doing the electrical work. Shoe Plumbing is doing the all the plumbing. Rashardic Flooring is doing our flooring. We have Liberty Glass Company has done all the glass work. So we have stayed with local contractors on the entire job. And that has worked out well for us. And I'm going to tell you, they've been very generous. Right. Uh, we have been very pleased with the work they've done and the way they've done it. And, you know, they're constantly bringing us new ideas and saying, you know, you could save some money if we do this instead of the way it was drawn out. W would you consider it? Well, then the executive board meets and we say, does that make sense? And we're pretty much about saving money, aren't we, Rich? Yeah, it's if, yeah, that's a magic. Sure. That's a magic, magic phrase. Word. <laughs> oh yeah, you can save money. We'll do it. Well, don't you need to? Yeah, go ahead. You start. <laughs> now, now, group. Yeah, we have it. We have to vote on something, but the work has already started because we're saving money. <laughs> but they they bring good ideas that you know. Sometimes when you look at it on paper, this made sense when it was drawn out mm -hmm. on a set of blueprints. Mm -hmm. But now you're looking at it in person and it's laid out. And you're saying that's not as practical as mm -hmm. it looked on the blueprints. We need to move that or move this. And uh, some of it, most of it is, is savings to us. Well, so. I think that shows the investment of the whole community in this project, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. Just they care enough to, you know, advise us and to take it down a better path. And, and I think it's yeah. impressive that this group of contractors that we've got have donated over $46,000 of like kind labor rather than you know they're donating that labor to this museum they want it to happen as bad as we do we so. really appreciate that we mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. absolutely and there's others along the way that have also given us great suggestions and ideas and and give some money so we appreciate all the businesses in town who've done that and all the donors mm -hmm. that have invested in us yes mm -hmm. absolutely. we greatly greatly appreciate them Absolutely. And I, I think it's impressive that uh, some of the donors that have originally donated have come back and donated a second and third time since we've started and they can see what we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to deliver the product that we told them. When we mm -hmm. went out and made our presentations, Rich and I, we're going to deliver that product mm -hmm. and it's going to be over and above. And uh, the two gentlemen that we have hired to set up the displays said this will be a state of the art, something like you've never seen before. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you know, they got the expertise with uh, LED lighting and the new lighting and mm -hmm. all this other stuff that you you stand there and listen to them talk about it, and I think, wow, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how you can have that much knowledge in one body. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting to hear what they say and how they're, uh, the Mayan temple, mm -hmm. they're, they're keeping it away from the wall so they can backlight it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, if, if I was setting it up, I'd have propped that thing up against the wall and we'd have been done. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. they're keeping it away. Uh, they're, they're using 3D displays like uh, with the dinosaurs, the natural environment, so they'll actually have trees mm -hmm. up against the wall. So the ideas that they're bringing are very exciting. And I think people will be wow. very impressed mm -hmm. when they open that door and walk in and see what this museum looks like. And that we have taken care of every piece that's in the existing museum, retained it, and we've added to that. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a, an experience that's unbelievable. Yeah. Very exciting. It very is very exciting. exciting. And I think, um, you know, once it's, it's open, I, there's going to be so many neat things we can do uh, mm -hmm. as far as uh, speaker presentations and um, people can come and, you know, we'll open it up at I'm just speaking here uh, at night. You know, if they want a special mm -hmm. uh, presentation, uh, you know, for their uh, work of uh, business or or what have you, and they they want to bring a speaker in, mm -hmm. and uh, we've got a nice we'll have a nice theater there uh, right. for a room to do that. And so there's just so many possibilities of, of what we can do uh, with it. So that's pretty exciting. It's cool. The uh, the theater, the theater is designed to be a multi-purpose space mm -hmm. so you can sit in the stadium seating and watch a pre-programmed show. Mm -hmm. um, we've already made contact with, with both satellite companies and all we have to do is when we're ready is 
is pit one against the other for the best price and ask for a commercial a, a commercial um, license or what it was a commercial permit permit and a person who's head of information can then uh, you know download and, and save you know pertin mm -hmm. pertinent shows that are playing throughout the day mm -hmm. but if like Shock Week would be a, a great mm -hmm. example. Yeah. For one week, there's nothing on the History Channel, but mm -hmm. shows on Shock. Well, we can, he can, she can, whoever's helping with information can take all ancient civilization-based videos, uh, uh, shows, mm -hmm. and string them together and play them at certain, certain times of the day. Um, we've been telling people that a part of the original Ketting building was a a movie theater mm -hmm. called the Lyric. Mm -hmm. Well, the Lyric showed black and white mm -hmm. movies. We've discussed that on at this platform. Mm -hmm. Silent movies. We discussed that at, on this platform on a couple mm -hmm. occasions. Sure. Well, in between the pre-programming, if there's nothing going on for a, a 15 minute, 20 minute span of time, we're going to load up silent movies. So if you're early to a three o'clock show, you'll be able to watch the same kind of silent movies that people back in 1900 <laughs> saw. Uh, it's a multi-purpose space in that uh, the lecture series. We, mm -hmm. we started a lecture series with the current museum mm -hmm. and we're planning on, we're planning on continuing. Uh, teachers can have, you know, can use the, uh, the facility as, as a classroom or we could have a guest lecture in Mm -hmm. at any point in the day or the evening. You know, maybe down the road we could even show um, history-related type, uh, you know, how cool would it be if, if uh, the Cub Scouts mm -hmm. were, were planning a sleepover and what we did is mm -hmm. we, lo we loaded up Night at the Museum uh -huh. and they could, they could watch that. They could watch that in the theater, and and they could they could have their sleeping bags in on mm -hmm. the theater floor and just outside in the Saint Genevieve room, and you know keep everybody, mm -hmm. you know, on that second floor for, you know, a, a sleepover. Plus, anything that we have in in the form of an audio visual presentation, we're going to be able to send that out to the TV that's over, overlooking the courtyard. Oh. So anybody that's on the courtyard will be able to, uh, will be able to see little infomercials. Hmm. Uh, you don't know about that, I'll help you with those. <laughs> 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 sure. we'll, we'll work together on that. <laughs> but uh, we, you know, somebody on the courtyard uh, uh, could look up at the, t the TV that's you know, mounted high, the, the uh, wiring is already there and We'll just run little information, uh, little little snippets and tidbits of, of what's going on inside there. It'd be nice if we could videotape our speakers that come in and keep them logged or keep them available. Oh, I so think that's that a given. That's, yeah. Yeah, all, <laughs> I mean, like all, the, have, all the people all, that come to visit all, and share. Yeah, yeah and, and, we, and can uh, uh, we can come up with, with a, uh, a release. With a release yeah, yeah, with a form. <laughs> that, yeah, they can, and they can do that. The other thing that we started, we've already started in the current museum that will dovetail nicely is we've been, we've been involved with the uh, Google uh, education platform. Mm -hmm. And Google knows about us and people around the world know about Google and the Google platform puts the two of us together. We've already done, we've already done three, um, three video lessons from the current museum over to India. I, and we've got a couple scheduled, uh, I think in March. Um, March and April, I think there's a South American uh, school mm -hmm. and one in, in Western, uh, Western U.S. that are interested in some aspect of uh, who we are and what we represent. So, and again, yeah, the, we can use the theater as the staging area for that. I think it'll be fascinating when the museum is up and running and we have all those displays to be able to walk through and share, I mean, have a voiceover and walk through and share the different cultures. Areas. Yeah, I, and, I, I, know, I see, the, I see the time eventually. I mean, if, if we're the, if we're the, 
the equivalent of the five-star Michelin, you know, facility. I think we're going to be. Um, I I can see um, hearing impaired. Uh, we'll need uh, those. Uh, <laughs> we'll need those things with people. Yeah, the uh, headphones. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and Steph talking about what people are looking at, and mm -hmm. you know, that's a di hearing. That's a disability, and maybe there's grants out there for that. I Not that I'm trying to do your job. I can't. <laughs> I can't handle my own at times. <laughs> hey, I'm open to all good ideas. <laughs> okay. And things to go after. All right, but um, you know, I can, I can, I can see, you know, that that type of setup too. Oh yeah. You so know? Jan, what you're you're hearing is what Steph said a while ago. It's endless. Mm -hmm. There is no mm -hmm. end to it. Uh, mm -hmm. We've approached all of the major manufacturers and mining companies in town to tell their story on video, mm -hmm. because the people that work at these mines, like Mississippi Lime mm -hmm. and Wholesome and mm -hmm. Wasp and the tar rock they're very proud of what they do but you right. can't go out there and see what they do yeah. and by going out and talking with them i've got to tour those plants unbelievable what's in this county what's going on so mm -hmm. they're they're going to show do videos of their plants and they will show those and the people that work there will be able to bring their relatives in and actually say okay now this is what i do at that plant here's what that I is do. very cool so. I was able to be at Park City and saw a mining display there mm -hmm. where they were mining, I guess, lead. I don't know, what were they mining out of Park City? Um, but they had a bottle and it showed the different layers of the mine and what was going on and how they brought it out. It was, it was phenomenal. I keep envisioning that we could put a little model of that, but we have so many mines in the area, how are you going to be able to really do that? Right. So to videotape it would be great. Right. But it was very fascinating. What about the uh, Lloyd of Farms? What, what a story to tell there, mm -hmm. is it not? And it's mm -hmm. unbelievable how every year we repeat that cycle of planting crops, bringing them in, storing them, and you guys do the whole works down there. And that's, that's an interesting story. For how many years has that been going on? I know, but just the change in agriculture in the last 100 years is, will blow you away. I will have to do a little sidekick here. We just had a birthday party for Braxton. And he has had his birthday down at Lloyd Ag for the last three years. And he brings in his friends from the city because they live in South St. Louis. And so when those guys get to come down and play in corn bins or look for pumpkins or ride around and see some of the big equipment they really are blown away they get to crawl up in it if they would like and they get to see what farming is really like and mm -hmm. the hands-on and the doing you know interacting with it is what's so much fun for them but that on a video mm -hmm. uh, hopefully we'll have that because uh, we'll have farm displays that's mm -hmm. part of our displays so very interesting. I think what you said, Steph, it's endless. There is no end yeah, really. to what the yeah, really. ability right. yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. And change those displays out. And these two new gentlemen are talking about that with their uh, display cases. They mm -hmm. will be on casters, and they will roll those around and change it up mm -hmm. so that uh, if you haven't been there in 30 days, you're going to see something new in the museum. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting. It's going to be a full-time job for somebody yes. to keep changing out the displays <laughs> actually we're rich, several people probably. rich you're not going to die either because you're going to have a big job out there <laughs> i i i am actually i'm 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 really i'm excited i'm i'm truly excited about this project um it's uh, it's 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 so amazing that um i don't know how many times i thank robert um when I'm not yelling at him uh, <laughs> about getting me involved, uh, getting me involved because you know, much like like Kerry said, I mean this, this we are this is like a building, and mm -hmm. we were we came on as we were starting to dig the foundation, and and you can't get any closer to the beginning mm -hmm. of a project like this, um, and I'm 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 pleased. Uh, beyond words that we're at the point that we are because I'm really thinking at this point the light at the end of the tunnel is not a train anymore mm -hmm. it's it's the end of the t tunnel that's how close we are to getting this first phase uh, completed 
we're well into the transition mm -hmm. of the current museum into the learning center. Um, the staff has been doing an amazing job. It, it's, on the, it's on the lap of the staff during their work shifts to begin moving stuff in, in the closets that we have and what's stored on top of the eight foot display cases over to the uh, former clip joint. Mm -hmm. We're using the clip joint as a staging area for some of the stuff until we get the green light that we can start moving stuff down into the basement of mm -hmm. the learning center. Um, in December when we, when, when we closed the door to the public for the last time as a museum, uh, we've got an action plan in place to uh, deal with the, the floor display cases and get them, f the items photographed, double check to make sure there's a, a card uh, in the catalog system, uh, double check to make sure that there is information about that in in the computer. Mm -hmm. um, it's we've got a timeline, mm -hmm. and you know by the end of um, I'm thinking by the end of January, the only thing that's going to be left physically in the current museum will be the eight foot vertical display cases that are bolted to the walls. Mm -hmm. Everything else will be moved out because as Robert said the um, the two gentlemen that are doing the mm -hmm. the setup display setup but we're using the clip joint the former clip joint as a staging area they're going to use the former museum as a staging mm -hmm. area and eventually we'll have everything we'll have everything over and we haven't even talked about the stuff that the Harris collection yes you know uh, getting that we can't move that until we know that the basement is the building it's is secure, secure the basement is dry, is dry mm -hmm. and you know. So have we kind of, do we have an opening date for the Museum Learning Center or is a mean an exact timeline that we're hoping to have the, the doors open? Construction, uh, the construction was due to be done. The building was finished and in our hands 12-1. Mm -hmm. We will get the building 12-1 for the display people to start setting displays up. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some components that are not complete yet. Uh, some things are on back order. Some things uh, have had to been changed after we look at mm -hmm. what we were doing. And some of those displays moved around. So some of this had to be changed. So uh, hopefully, hopefully by April 1st, we will be, have this completed. Uh, but you know, we're at this point, it would be an absolute tragedy to rush it at this point right. and do something right. that and we, we want to open it right. it's everything right. yeah. so right yeah, to this to point. Yeah. Yeah. So state of the art. They tend to tell me that that will happen, but I would imagine when you get in and start setting it up, it may go quicker mm -hmm. or it may be a little bit longer. I don't know, but that's what right. we should So, I mean, that's that just quarter. so the public knows that to get excited. Yeah. 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 By spring, yeah. Or sometime uh, uh, in the spring. The next, the next know, surge maybe. of interest. Mm -hmm. I, I guarantee you, the next surge of interest is when the the gooseneck lamps and the lettering mm -hmm. go up in the front of the building. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, that is ready now. Uh, we've got to paint the top of the building. Yep. The parapet. We've got to paint that. We've got to paint the columns in between the windows, brick in between the windows that we have installed, and then the, those lights go up, and the lettering goes up, and the arch sign in front of the courtyard will go up. So all of that will be huge. Mm -hmm. It's a huge transformation. And like you said earlier, it's going quick. Mm -hmm. We've laid plans for three years for this, but mm -hmm. now it's going quick. We're at the end of it. Mm -hmm. But there, there's always some changes, so I don't want to get... Well, we can't, we can't commit to a, an exact date, but it's yeah. exciting to know that we're working toward a certain date, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. to open. We'll get through the winter and we'll have a fresh start somewhere in... 2019, right? Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Big yes. grand opening. I think yes. you know, big red carpet. Oh, yeah. And you know, with the museum closing, then people need to know that it's going to be a reopening soon. You know. Oh, oh yeah. And so that we don't want them to. Yeah. No big, big, uh, big, uh, big ribbon cutting, big fancy. You know, we 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 won't have the. Um, I guess we could shoot fireworks off the roof. <laughs> <laughs> 
Where did that come from? <laughs> you might want to ask forgiveness, not permission. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but you're on to that. We have a big grand opening. Yeah. And watch for other things that will be coming. Uh, Carrie has uh, some ideas about our current people who have donated yes. to show them some love. So uh, mm -hmm. she's working on that project, and that will be forthcoming. Uh, it'll be a private showing for those individuals right, who've already committed to say thank you um, and uh, make sure they get them excited and uh, reignite why they were interested in committing to the project as well but we definitely want to make sure they feel special and say thank you that they have committed to us and there's more people that can be special people for us. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We are. There's we still time to be have, special people. Exactly. We have <laughs> arms wide open for special people. Come join the special exactly. people. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Come join the what'll be the some group, some special group for the museum, or. And that that will happen as soon as it's physically possible to yes. be safe about it. Mm -hmm. You know, so we got to get that courtyard poured. We've got to have mm -hmm. uh, the doors all installed. Right. Uh, the floors to a point where nobody's going to fall in a hole or anything. So, and we're close to right. that. But, uh, but watch, Carrie will be announcing that uh, via step or someplace, Facebook, whatever. And invitations. Yes. And we'll send out invitations as well. So, just very excited. Mm -hmm. Most likely after the first of the year. I would say that yes. would be a true statement. Yes. Yeah. And there will be wine involved. I've already yes. volunteered to do the wine thing. <laughs> what is that common connection that keeps coming back with the wine? Rich just likes to party, doesn't he? <laughs> party animal, Rich. Ah, hey, it's in my DNA. <laughs> well, we have about three and a half minutes, so I'm going to put it out to the group. What hasn't been said, and what do we want to say before we close the show tonight? Is there anything that's burning in any of your hearts that you want to open up and share and... No, we, we, we talked about the closing of the current museum and the opening up of the Learning Center. Uh, it should be noted again that um, we've already offered uh, to the uh, county if they're going to take the building back over. You know, we offered some of the items that have been on display. We'd be willing to loan those if, mm -hmm. if they set their entrance foyer up a certain way so um, you know even though everything is being planned on physically to be moved over to the learning center mm -hmm. um, we don't really have a problem leaving a few items behind kind of paying homage to the fact that um, it was it was a difficult process when the building was originally Mm -hmm. um, the idea, the construction. We don't want people to think we're abandoning it. Mm -hmm. We're just moving it, as Robert said earlier, mm -hmm. uh, to you know a bigger, a bigger facility. Mm -hmm. But we'd like, you know, we'd like to leave a few items behind, um, so that when people come into, if it's the mm -hmm. county, uh, if, if it's somebody else, you know, the option is there. They can always say no. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've already, you know, that's that's our way of saying. You know, we were here, we, we were happy to be here, um, but circumstances beyond our control um, has made us, mm -hmm. you know, move. Mm -hmm. yeah. The museum, um, I think it's getting the, the uh, people think, oh, it's the dinosaur museum, and it is. That is the showstopper of the museum, but it's going to be so much more than that, mm -hmm. and it's going to, um, have something to appeal to anyone's interests, I think. So I think uh, that's important for people to keep in mind that uh, while that, that is going to be a big part of it and that's going to be the wow factor, if you will, mm -hmm. but uh, there's going to be a lot of, lot of interesting things there that will pique anyone's curiosity, I think. Well, I just want to say that it's been enjoyable to have your energy and Carrie's energy in the room tonight, and I know that you have brought a lot of energy to the board the team that's been meeting and new ideas, new exciting directions for us to go. So I am very excited about all that you're sharing and all that you've done and all that you're going to be doing for the Museum Learning Center. And I know that 
you know, Robert and Rich to love that new energy coming into our Absolutely. organization. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I know that we're, we're wanting to invite the teachers and the retired teachers, the teachers that are interested in teaching the children to come and join us and um, bring your ideas in. You're the experts in bringing it, com making it come to life for children. So, you know, we're always looking for those to join us to be able to help with those Absolutely. learning mm -hmm. activities and ideas. So we are getting close. We're down to 13 seconds and, and running. You, so you I'm going to say, say good night. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you next month. Um, we will be here. Rich, the show's going to be? Uh, it, it'll be uh, either the museum again, or it will be um, a, a 501c3 group. Great. Good night. Thanks for being with us. <laughs>